Let me ask you a question. How many rapes do you think took place in Karachi today? What is the probability of a rape taking place in Karachi? We are, after all, one of the world's 12th largest mega cities. And according to the last census count, we are 16 million people. So how many rapes? This question stuck in my craw when I became a journalist nearly two decades ago. When I became the editor uh, for two daily national newspapers, the Express Tribune and Daily Times, I would often ask my reporter, the crime reporter, how many rapes had taken place. And he would always just shrug. There were many reasons why the crime reporters would say they didn't know if any rapes had taken place. Rape is vastly underreported in Pakistan because it ends up costing its victims and their families. Of course, every once in a while, there is a case that will emerge and blow up on social media and be covered on television and become a national obsession. But these exceptions are not the norm. They're high profile cases. In those days, the entire news industry was taken up with covering what was the first wave of terrorism in Pakistan. So every day there was a bomb blast and the reporters were drawn to obviously covering the Al-Qaeda operatives and the suicide bombers. Um, they were not necessarily interested in finding out about the girl who was the teenager who was walking home um, from tuitions and was raped. So the rapes were largely uncovered. To give you a little bit more context, I was made city editor at the Daily Times when I was 28 years old. And all the other metro sections were run by men. So naturally, uh, when I would come in to uh, work, I would be hungry to cream the competition. I realized that there was a lot of mimicry in the news industry. All the newspapers were covering the same stories in the same way, with the same angles. And so naturally, I made it a point to do exactly what the other papers were not doing. The best journalism takes place when you ask the question that is obvious, but people are not asking. Like, how many rapes took place in Karachi today? Don't get me wrong, I was not a crusader for women's rights. I was simply perverse. And I was made all the more perverse by my work environment, uh, which was a newsroom full of men. So I would react really badly when the reporters would come and tell me uh, that they couldn't get information or some topic was off limits. And Lord help the bureaucrat who would withhold information from us, which I thought should be easily publicly accessible. And by extension, you could not tell me that I could not go someplace in Karachi. If I had listened to all of the discouragement that had come my way in the newsroom, I would not be standing here in front of you today. So I held on to the question um, because I didn't know how to tackle it right at that point in time. I held on to it for 18 years. And I mention this to you because some of the best work is slow work. And sometimes a line of inquiry, an investigation that is worth it, will take that long. In the meantime, in the intervening years, I had started to slowly do some small um, mapping exercises, simple uh, data viz journalism. And the genesis of this was when I asked the uh, award-winning Polish designer who designed the Express Tribune to give us a crime map for all of the metro sections. When I look at the crime map, I think, and I used to think every day, is there no way that we can find, we can find a way to get to make it available to people to anonymously self-report rape. 
and it would appear as a dot. I thought Karachi would light up like a Christmas tree in that case. Um, and then if the police or an NGO had verified the information, the dot could change color. So you could distinguish between the user-generated um, data or the crowdsourced data and the officially verified data. Um, is there no way for people to report rape without fearing that their reputation is going to be shredded on the nine o'clock news? So what if we had a tool like this to be made available in a mega city like Karachi? By the time I became a digital editor at Sama TV, we finally had the tools to start to tackle this. So I grabbed the crime reporter, Amir Majid, who you'll see there. And because there was no centralized data of rape in Karachi, what happened is that we had to go to the source. And in, 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 in our case here, this was the three government tertiary hospitals, Abbasi Shaheed, um, Civil Hospital, and Jinnah Postgraduate Medical Center. And these places, uh, the medical legal sections at these hospitals are the first port of call for anyone who is reporting a rape for which they wish to prosecute or register an FIR, a police case. So we painstakingly went through the rape registers, as they are called, anonymized the data, and gathered um, information on the first six months of uh, 2021. We had another problem. Uh, there was no map of the Karachi police stations. So if you go online, what you will see, um, if you put in a police station's name, you'll get a point. Um, you will not get the jurisdictional area that they are responsible for. So this map had to be created. And Amir Majid worked very, very hard over several months to create this map, which to the best of my knowledge, is uh, we're the only people who have it. This is the uh, police station jurisdictions in uh, Karachi. And then I took the rape data and I put it on this map. And what happened surprised me. Can you see DHA? It's white. Zero rapes reported. Surprise, surprise. Look at that dark maroon, and in fact, the C-shaped uh, maroon, the dark areas. These are where the most rapes were reported in Karachi. That darkest area is Kurangi industrial area. It's the working districts, the working class districts, the factory districts where the rapes were being reported. So maps, I realized we're doing the heavy lifting where text stories or photographs could not. And they were very important in Karachi because of its sheer magnitude um, to develop an understanding where often generalized explanations, uh, inaccurate explanations can abound about certain phenomena in the absence of hard data. Let me give you a few examples of, of the other work that we did. During Karachi's bloodiest year, which was uh, 2012, when we had uh, what is believed to be the highest homicide rate in the world in that year, there was a lot of discussion about no-go areas. Um, areas, uh, parts of the city where the police and the paramilitary rangers could not venture because of militants, extremists, or um, gangs. Um, so what happened is that I asked the crime reporter Faraz to Faraz Khan to make a map of the uh, no-go areas. And the um, Supreme Court used our map to grill the Inspector General of Police to ask him if it was true that the, uh, the, their writ did not extend to these areas in Karachi. This, is, uh, this investigation took four months. What you're looking at is a map of the network of uh, Karachi's water supply. And what happened in the summer of 2015 is that there was an acute water shortage in Karachi. And so I was asked to look at why it uh, had taken place. The Supreme Court had ordered that the police should register FIRs 
um, against anyone who was caught stealing water from the water board's main lines. Can you see that cluster there in the west, in Baldia? All of these dots are FIRs. Why were so many people stealing water in that area? As it turns out, it is because the water board, the KWSB, had not laid a network of pipelines from the mains to their neighborhoods and their homes, which is why they were forced to steal it, steal it from the mains. The next map uh, was also a long investigation. And what you, I realized is that maps were essential to showing bad government decision making, to expose corruption in a way. What you're looking at is the route of a canal, the chosen route of a canal, to bring fresh water supplies to water-starved Karachi from Kinjar Lake. And the problem is that was designed to pass through and very close to two elite gated communities, Behria Town and DHA City, instead of being routed to the inner city neighborhoods where water was most needed. Then um, the next map also showed where, I mean, elite capture is happening. This is Karachi's Malia River and Malir Expressway running by the river has been planned and is under construction as I speak in order to connect DHA here down in the south to the gated community of uh, DHA city up there in the north. And this uh, piece of infrastructure is going to destroy the Malir River Basin ecosystem. So I'm sure you will remember uh, the 2020 flooding in Karachi, the urban flooding, uh, when life was completely paralyzed uh, because about 80 millimeters of, of rain fell in a very short period of time. So uh, the map here, uh, we didn't make this, shows the extent of the flooding in DHA. And the joke is that all of these people were able to buy plots, um, but they could not collectively buy themselves a stormwater drainage system. In fact, the stormwater drainage system that had been built by DHA completely failed. And we got the map and uh, we did the story on, on that disaster. My favorite one, however, is this one. Um, so it is a map of the 44 flyovers of Karachi which were mostly built during the celebrated tenure of our elected mayor, um, Mustafa Kamal. And he wanted to solve Karachi's traffic jam problem. So in his infinite wisdom, he thought that we should build signal-free corridors. And you can see them along, back one, uh, the arteries of the main arteries of Karachi. Now in a signal-free corridor, you take away the signals so the cars can move faster. And I had this sneaking suspicion that this was a really bad idea, bad urban planning, because everywhere else in the world, flyovers were being torn down. Um, but over here, people in Karachi were so happy that flyovers were being built. I went to the Jinnah Hospital road traffic accident cell, which gathered data. Uh, it was started by Dr. Rashid Juma. And I found that in the first signal-free corridor, what happened is that the mortality rate doubled because it was just cars moving with speed. Mustafa Kamal had built for cars at the cost of people. The pedestrian injury rate had tripled as well. When I joined, um, when I left the newsroom about a year ago, I, I joined AKU Pediatrics where I do media strategy. And I realized that I had inadvertently all these years been working on a lot of public health and safety data without knowing it. Um, and in fact, as you must all probably know, one of the greatest um, contributions to medical science came out of mapping. Um, this is uh, the map of London from this book. Uh, during the 1800s, the uh, cholera pandemic uh, hit Europe and other parts of the world. And Dr. John Snow, 
he was he didn't quite buy that it was the miasma uh, airborne uh, sort of contagion. Um, he found, and he made this map down here, uh, that the people who were drinking from a well, which was next to a sewer, uh, were dying, but the people who were drinking from a uh, ale from or beer from a brewery were not, because the brewing process was killing the germs. So he proved uh, and published his paper that the cholera was waterborne, and, and that really changed a lot of science. Um, Scientific inquiry, uh, just like uh, journalism, starts with a question that is based on what we see as human suffering. As a journalist, um, you work on the merest of hunches. Uh, you're almost looking for something that you don't know, and you don't know where to even go to look for it. But I found to my delight that no matter how painful and difficult, mapping was a way to figure out where to go. So I'd like to think my legacy is an idea which I would give to you, the idea of rape maps, the idea of visualizing answers to unknowns after painstakingly gathering data and to develop better solutions for our people, to go where I was not able to. I'll end with a snippet from uh, my favorite poet, uh, Theodore Rothke. It's called The Waking. I wake to sleep and take my waking slow. I feel my fate in what I cannot fear. I learn by going where I have to go. This shaking keeps me steady, I should know. What falls away is always and is near. I wake to sleep and take my waking slow. I learn by going where I have to go. Thank you.